just realized we need to bring a beacon over here. Yeah, what for? Pick this stuff up faster. I'm picking it up about as fast as I can hit. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose you could really just wipe through it, couldn't you? One of those. You got somewhere uh, you need to be, monkey boy? <laughs> yeah, monkey he boy. needs to be getting on building. <laughs> ah. Time to collect the resources? Whoa! Could have been shot at? Yeah, apparently a skelly must have wandered by the door and shot. It landed in the brick right behind me. Good shot there, skelly. I don't think it was a skelly. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more of a, a golden yeah. avenger. <laughs> Good shot there, skelly. He's in golden armor, too. <laughs> Calling me Monkey Boy. I beg your pardon, Monkey Girl. Have either of you seen the uh, TV series Jonathan Creek about the magicians? Magicians. Um, well, I don't know what you call. Them. He designs the tricks for magicians, so he sort of like works out how you get people in boxes and out of boxes, etc. You know, but he solves murders, impossible lot room murders. There's one mm -hmm. called the the one of one of his one of the um, episodes is called the House of Monkeys and it's it's about this um, uh, research d d uh, guy who has this house full of all these different types of primates and everything. Uh -huh. and he gets murdered and uh, they have this big pet gorilla um, that wanders around. And at one point, Jonathan Creek goes into the bathroom to go to the toilet and the gorilla sat there on the toilet. Using the toilet, so he's looking at it. He says, "Oh, I'm sorry, like you know," and comes out, uh -huh. and uh, the fella's standing outside. And uh, Jonathan Creek says to him, "He says, well, he says that's really, really clever." And the guy says, "No, it's not as clever as you think. It is. He eats the toilet paper." <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> oh, know. you should really, really watch Jonathan Creek. It's very, very good. Yeah, have to see if it's on around here anywhere. Peter might like it if she likes. Um, I, that's what I was thinking. She, yeah, mystery stuff like that's right up her alley. And she really loved the what line of fire or whatever it was that I. Lenny read. James is a very good actor. He's a very good actor. Is Lenny Lenny James. was in the first episode of, Walk of Walking Dead as well. He was the black guy that um, that uh, the guy from Walking Dead uh, who Andrew Lincoln mm. of course another British actor um, he left him and his son uh, didn't he with the walkie talkie and says I'll ring you up uh, I'll, I'll phone you every mm. morning or something. Yeah. Yep. Lenny James. Great, you're getting some nice stuff here. I don't know what I'd use it for or anything, but <coughs> well, actually, nether t nether t uh, tunnels look pretty good. But, you know, I can do nice tunnels with it. Yeah, it is going to have to take some thinking and rejiggering of mind patterns to go and go. Hmm, I can actually make things in different colors besides just gray and red now. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting a lot more white and uh, light grey than I want. I want the uh, reds. And, uh... Here you go. If someone wants to grab these and chuck them in their chest. <laughs> you end the chest completely full. Yeah, my inner chest is full. <coughs> I'm just out here digging and for the companion. Give, give it. Do it let Brendan have it because then it will give him resources. Oh, there you go, D. Okay, thank you. you'll be able to build something really pretty with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just out here to dig and for the companionship and conversation and I'm hoping someone worthwhile shows up eventually. <laughs> I wouldn't bank, bank on it. Breath.
So you're going to get yourself a bit of uh, banished then, are you? Yeah, I think so. I really do think so. It looks like a... All the stuff I've seen of it now looks like a, a game I'd really be interested in. What's it all about? Uh, basically, you're a group of villagers who've been banished from your land and you, you've you come to a new land and you've got to survive, you've got to set up and survive and you, you set up your town but it's like a cross between um, Dwarf Fortress and Anno and a very pretty game and you, but you've just got to assign so many villagers to building yeah, so many to just, just, farmers just stop and... there, stop there as soon as you mention Dwarf Fortress and Anno if you listen quietly you can hear the quiet snoring coming from his end of the <laughs> Oh, it was it was it quiet? I'm sorry, I was trying to make it louder. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like a, a city builder game. City builder survival game. That's cool. Very pretty. Yeah, gorgeous graphics. Really nice. Total Biscuit was complaining really though the fact that he says you know he says there's not really a huge amount of buildings you can build and he says to actually survive at it and do any good really you've got to learn a, a good build order he says and, and, and you're completely doing that every time you play like you know you're just doing the same thing again and again gotcha he doesn't think it will appear to Anno players because he thinks Anno players will want um large economy and everything and be able to to do that and it's not about that it's about keeping your people alive or well, keeping your settlement alive not mm -hmm. your people because your people will age and die and you know, all sorts <clears throat> and have children and so forth mm -hmm. gotcha. um okay just a second you know in that aspect it may not pe appeal to people who you know play anno and nothing else Just because I play Anno doesn't mean I don't like playing Minecraft and don't like playing, you know, Don't Starve and don't like playing Total Annihilation. We play Don't Starve. I've still, I've got it. I bought it, but I haven't got round to uploading it. Uploading it now. Sort of like I really, really wanted it. Wanted it. Kept waiting for it to come on sale. As soon as it came on sale, I bought it, and then I, now I can't work up the enthusiasm to install it. <laughs> He has been uploading some pictures of Henry lately that have just been so freaking cute. He is really developing a personality. Yeah. But he's getting big now. Yeah. Wild watching him walk around. I mean, he's still having to hang on to stuff. He's not walking on his own yet, but... Yeah, it won't be long though if he can stand and yeah. do all that. Not gonna be long at all. What sort of age do kids start saying their first words and things? Hmm, somewhere between one and two. I mean, he should start. He should start saying a few things here in the next in the coming months. Because you know, by the age of two is when they discover the word no. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly realize what it means that they can say it too there used to be um, a show on by um, <clears throat> a doctor here who really like studied he studies people and, and, and kids in general like you know I'm sure he said somewhere around about the age of is it four or six or something but one of them ages is where children actually learn the concept of lying you know and it's, it's really really strange like you know he, he showed them all and he'd show you the ones before and they wouldn't be able to lie about something then he'd show the ones that were at the right age and suddenly you know they'd know they were getting into trouble if they did something so they'd lie about mm -hmm. it you know <laughs> where did that sweet go that we told him not to touch well I don't know somebody came in and took it <laughs> <laughs> I, ref I prefer to call it the birth of creativity. <laughs> so you suddenly develop an imagination. Mm -hmm. 
in here I still say it's place a, touch, a torch then go six blocks and then place another torch want me to count to seven I'll have to take my other sock off <laughs> <laughs> I can only do six of one foot. <laughs> Slightly a web six at that. <laughs> and unfortunately, taking off my other sock, I'll still only be able to count to ten. <laughs> That's if I count the one that points out the back. There's uh, we like you know we're being with Bill and everything like you know we see I see a fair few Bollywood things and everything now and um, mm -hmm. there's uh, quite a big you know they have big st movie stars like we do you know and um, like course, we have Tom yeah. Cruise and everything. Is he called Ricky Roshan? I think he's. Y'all have Tom Cruise. Awesome. <laughs> we <laughs> don't have to claim him anymore. He's yours. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, well... Yeah, I can't does, stand I that crazy British actor, Tom Cruise. Oh, God, I wish he'd go back. <laughs> I meant Western culture. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think he's called Hrithik Roshan, the guy. Um, mm -hmm. Very famous, very handsome guy, very famous for his, his dance and everything. And yet, I've watched a film with him in it, and uh, then towards the end, Bueller says, she says, did you notice anything different about him? And I thought, well, not really. And he's actually got two thumbs um, really? on his hand. Yeah, he's he's got like um, a second thumb growing out of one of his. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's out of both thumbs or just one thumb. I think it's out of both. You know. So he's literally the six-fingered man. Literally, yeah, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> um, you know, and he it's not not had any sort of negative impact on him at all. You know, he's he's mm -hmm. still like one of the biggest stars. Yeah. But you know, I think I think it's a lot more common and everything. You know, genetic deformities there, I suppose, because I suppose there's a lot of cousins marrying and things and everything. You know, hmm. possibly. And, and plus, you know, you get the situation where you know you've got over a billion and a half people in your country. Yeah. You're gonna have a, a wider incidence of of mutation than you get in you know less populated countries. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. G was saying uh, Henry's standing up and everything now. Oh yeah, he's running around, well, trying to run around and... Cool. Big boy now. Yeah. Yeah, we played our first game of Firefly the other night. Oh, how did it go? Pretty well. Of course, uh, as we were playing, there was an earthquake, so, you know. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> See, I was at the hospital and almost nobody felt a thing. There was one or two patients that said they did. But then again, you know, it's hard to tell how much they really did. and Because it was only after the fact, you know, that, well, I thought I felt something. Oh, I was sitting on the floor mm -hmm. and things started shaking like you had, oh, yeah. you know, like we had the, uh, something like the washing machine was unbalanced or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Things started yeah. shaking it. Rudolph called. Said, oh. Yeah. Yeah, Rudolph called from home. We were sitting there and that's how the first I knew about it because it's like he calls and he's all excited and he's like, hey, hey, did y'all feel that? It's like, feel what, Rudolph? Like y'all didn't feel that? Said we just had an earthquake or something. Said I was sitting here and uh, sitting here and uh, said all of a sudden the table started shaking and the the computer was rattling on the table. And my kids come running in, going, "Dad, what's that? What's that?" Said it lasted about fifteen twenty seconds or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, we totally missed it. I don't know if it was just because the hospital was really sturdy, or I don't know if I was wrestling some grandma or something like that or what was going on but yeah I didn't feel a thing nobody no one that I was working with felt anything and or knew anything about it until we saw the news later on that night I was like cool 
Wish I'd felt it. Be nice to go. Okay, I've been in an earthquake now. Vita said she did. We very rarely get anything like that here, but there was one a couple of years ago we got. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was sat on the sofa, um, and it was middle of the night, it was about four o'clock in the morning or something like that, you know. Um, and it really did feel like the, the sofa just turned to like a waterbed, you know, because you could mm -hmm. feel the ripples of all, almost like water waves coming through and everything. Yeah. And it lasted for about five seconds or so, and I was just completely baffled because, you know, I've never really felt anything like that before. <laughs> Yeah, that's what happened with uh, Vita. She was like that. She was sitting there at the t kitchen table studying and said all of a sudden everything on the table started rattling. And she said, I had no idea what it was. She said, I figured like a big, like she said, you know, occasionally that's happened with like the, uh, when the garbage truck has gone by and has rattled the house. But she said, I figured what the hell was the garbage truck going by at 10 o'clock at night for? Strange, isn't it? Yeah. But the uh, Firefly game, it's uh, quite uh, quite a lot of rules and very confusing until you start playing. Yeah? But fun. Um, what sort of... Uh, I mean, I've not even seen it. Is it um, sort of like one like Monopoly where you get all the way around the board or is it like sort of like chess where taking pieces or you're uh you pick a storyline and the storyline has kind of a set thing of of victories like mm -hmm. um first person to 15,000 credits or first person to um um be uh have a positive be solid with all the uh, people that are offering jobs, like Nishka and and uh, patients and all of them. Um, <laughs> uh, patient uh, shot in the last time. <laughs> yep. and, you know, as Nishka says, things are not so solid. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, you can choose to be, you know, pro-alliance or against the alliance and stay away from them and go through Reaver territory and get, um, there's four different Firefly ships that you, so it's up to four people can play. So you move your little Fireflies around the board, um, and every time you do, you have to make a... So it is an actual basic, board game. Yeah, it's an actual, okay. I mean, it, just about takes up our entire coffee table. Okay, cool. I couldn't tell, you know, I couldn't tell if it was a board game. So many games are going to, like, card games now. Gotcha. So, cool. Yeah, it's an actual board game. Mm-hmm. Um, Very cool. You pick up jobs, you pick up crew, you pick up gear, you know. And are you playing as Mal and Co, or are you your own version of him? Um, you... One of the ships is the Serenity. But, as I said, there are three other, um, Fireflies, and they each have names as well. One of the guys um, is named Mal, one is named Hal, one is named Fowl, one is named Tal. <laughs> and one <when> Susan. <laughs> um, A guy named no, Jane. That would be Jane's, <laughs> bro Jane's brother Susan. <laughs> exactly. No, they're all of the original cast are crew that you can hire, and if you want to start off as Mal, uh, have your choice of uh, several different le uh, leaders or, or yeah, leaders. Um, Mal is one of the choices. Um, trying to think of some of the other ones that were the leaders. Um, each one has their own special abilities. You have um, persuasion, mechanic, and gunfighting or combat. Each person has a different special ability. And then as you go through the game, you have to hire your crew. And like Wa Wash is, you know, has he's 
on his card it says pilot, but he also has like uh, persuasion and I think maybe mechanic or maybe it was just all persuasion, like two persuasion points. Um, if were to get Kaylee or one of them, then I think we had full three uh, mechanic points. All of Saffron or all of her Bridget and all the other personas that she took, each one of them had a set of, of traits. So you could actually and, hire her, could you? Yeah, and and it depended Ooh. on where you hired her from. Each each derivative of her was in a different location. Like one was in Persephone, and and the second one per uh, whoever hired her first, the other versions of her were taken out of the game. But it allowed everybody a chance to get her if it happened to be in that. You know, you draw two cards or three cards, and you can buy up to two of the cards that you pick. So if you stop at a place and <clears throat> want to spend, you get two action points each turn, and if you want to use one of your action points as buy, then during that you can buy gear, you can buy crew, um, fuel cells and parts to repair your ship. Think of like the old Oregon Trail. You know, whenever if your wagon broke a wheel, you had a certain mm -hmm. number of parts on, you know, mm -hmm. in the game or whatever, and you know, it's like your wagon wheel broke, lose one turn, you fix right. the wheel or something. See, that's a little confusing. I thought it was Kaylee that everybody had a chance to get. <laughs> uh -huh. Don't you speak bad of Kaylee. <laughs> I'm not speaking bad of her at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just because she's rather misguided and goes after the doctor. It's <laughs> because she's friendly. Friendly and shiny. <laughs> Terrible tasty dresses. <laughs> you ain't ever gonna have a place you can wear that, you know. <laughs> <laughs>